Hi. Welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for watching. And uh, if you enjoy this video, would you hit the like button? As well as uh, if you want to hear more stuff like this, uh, subscribe and ring the bell. Uh, and I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with other people you know who might like this as well. But uh, moving on, uh, today's topic is pick soldering. So we're going to be talking about this tool here and how to use it most effectively. Uh, I have found that uh, one of the most frustrating things that I experienced when I was first doing this was how long it took me to make something. And once I mastered using this to uh, precisely place solder where I wanted it to go, it speeded things up immensely. So uh, I'm going to focus on the speed aspect of it, but also it will allow you to put uh, very precise amounts of solder in uh, very specific places pretty easily. So, so you can see I've set up here a situation where I have a whole bunch of small solder joints that I need to do. If you look, I've got uh, these little swirly wires in between these two pieces of 14 gauge round wire and um, I need to solder them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, just to solder in the, uh, the decorative components before I uh, make it round and solder it together. So um, that's a lot of little solder joints. And when I first started, I would have taken these little tiny pieces of solder like this and I would have been, uh, after I flexed it of course, I'd be putting them specifically on the little spots where I wanted it to solder. And with that happening, um, with this many solder joints, uh, inevitably you're going to bump things and little pieces are going to fall into the loops and stuff like that. And then you'll try and fish them out and then you move things around and then you have to realign everything. It's just kind of a frustrating mess when you have to deal with stuff like that. So. Um, there's a couple ways you can deal with it. One, you could do it in stages with uh, three or four pieces of solder at a time. Get those ones to flow and stick and then add more and it'll stabilize the whole thing and that's one way to do it. But um, if you're going to do pick soldering, you can take what used to take me when I first started maybe an hour and a half to do because I was precisely placing these things. Uh, turns it into something like 10 minutes. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, I'll do an actual time video here and you can uh, we can look and see how long it takes, but I've cut, I've cut a whole bunch of little tiny pieces of solder. I'm going to sprinkle them on the pad here. A piece of hair there. So I don't want to put that on there. That'll smell bad. <laughs> okay, so as always, um, torch going. Little flux. Flux. So most picks are uh, just a wooden stick with a piece of tungsten in it. Tungsten because it won't melt at the temperatures we're using, and even if it's glowing red, uh, it stays relatively strong so you can't break it too much by pushing on it. Some metals become fragile under temperature like this. So um, Honestly, uh, the trick to doing this is uh, ideally I'm going to melt a little piece of this onto the end of the pick, I'm going to heat this piece up to 1450 degrees uh, and then while it's 1450 degrees I'm going to touch that piece of solder to the spot where I want it to go. If this is hot enough it'll melt it right off the tip of this and it should flow right on there. So in practice what I do is I, I pick up a piece of solder like this and okay, I've got to melt it onto the tip. That's sometimes the hardest part. Uh, to do that uh, in order to pick one up, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll melt it, and then as it's cooling and I move the heat away, I jab the pick in there and it'll pick it up there. So I actually picked up two there, so I'm going to pick one up instead again. Okay. Once you've mastered picking up the little balls of uh, solder, uh, then the thing to remember is it does no good to stick this in here and hold it while I'm heating this here. In fact, because I'm shaky and I might uh, 
move a little bit when I'm doing that, I might, I'm might i bound to knock things out of position and stuff. So ideally, I want to be able to gauge when the metal has reached that soldering temperature. So I'm looking at the color of the metal, and once I have a couple of solder units on here, I can watch when those start to liquefy again a little bit to know when it's ready for the next one. So we'll watch uh, as I do this. So first I'm going to heat this up a little bit. And then I'm watching the color of the metal. It starts to get kind of that, it gets a little bit of a reddish hue to it. Then I'm going to focus right in the spot where the thing, uh, where I'm going to put the piece of solder in order to bump that up a few more degrees right there. Okay. And what happened was I pushed this out on this one, not, I pushed it out a little bit and so it wasn't in contact so it jumped onto the wire. So all I had to do was roll the wire in a little bit and then it flowed on there. So let's pick up another one. Good thing is I've already heated this thing up pretty, pretty well heated this thing up pretty well, so it doesn't take as long to get it up to temperature again, so I can throw those on there pretty quickly. Cut just a few more here.
I missed one there. Let's see another one I missed. Right there. I think that's all of them. Uh, I'll cool it off and we'll take a look at it and then we'll see. Okay, I think I got them all. Um, before I, I go ahead and make this into a full-fledged ring, I'll, I'll uh, double check a little more carefully, but um, you can see how much quicker that can go. And uh, because you're applying uh, solder pretty quickly, you don't have to keep reheating the metal as much because it's already pretty hot. You just have to briefly run it up a little bit. Uh, and then you can just touch it on there and it flows right on. So. Uh, with a little practice, you can get pretty quick at that, and it saves you a lot of time. Um, it also, uh, if you have, say, something that's elevated, and there's a teetery spot where you need to put a piece of solder, but you can't, uh, you can't do that. Um, that's a good time to use pick solder because you can just touch it right to it. So. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, and one way to think about pick soldering is. Many people use wire solder, so they'll have a, a piece of wire solder. We'll imagine this is a piece of solder, and when they're doing their piece, they'll get it up to the temperature it needs to be, and then they'll just touch some of the wire solder on there. So it's very much the same as pick soldering, but the thing that's different about it is you can't control exactly how much of the solder melts. It happens pretty quickly, and so sometimes you get a little more solder than you hoped on there. And sometimes if you're a little gun shy, not enough. So you have to go back and do it again. So I find with a pick, you're picking up exactly the size piece of solder that you've decided to use. And so you can get real consistency on, on solder joints like that. So that's another advantage and a way to think about it in terms of how it compares to using just wire solder like that. So um, basically the same thing. I, I just personally feel like this gives you a little bit more control. So um, if you want to get fast at this, uh, so you can actually make some money doing it, uh, practice doing pick solder because it really helps out a lot. So I hope this is useful to you, and thank you for watching. Okay, well that was pick soldering, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, would you please hit the like button? And uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell as well so you get updates when I uh, upload a new video. Uh, that being said, thanks for watching, and I really appreciate comments and such, so feel free to do that if you want to. But uh, either way, have a nice day and happy silversmithing.